Uh, first of all, I would like to, you know, thank you for accepting my invitation and being here today with me to, you know, discuss your ideas and philosophy over football and Romans uh, with uh, the Greek audience. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so before anything, uh, I need to ask, I have to ask if uh, you and your family are fine, are OK. Uh, I mean, this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic we are all getting through. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty good. I have like a wife and, and two kids on uh, 17 and 15, a boy and a girl. And yeah, they're, they're home from school, but they're doing a lot of things like like online. And but we are pretty OK in, in Denmark. We are like opening the society a little bit now with the youngest children coming to school and some can go to work again. And so, yeah. But let's see, I'm just saying everything just calm and easy because of, of course football is totally closed down at the moment. But yes, I'll of course. Be, yeah, I hope it'll it'll begin again in like like a month or two and then uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Maybe sooner in some countries, but yeah, it's it's going uh, pretty good uh, across Europe, most of, of Europe, yeah. Uh, so taking it from the start, um, you are a self-taught, uh, let's say, specialist in throwing, um, in throwing tactics and technique. Uh, how did it all begin? I mean, when and why did you did you say to yourself that this thing is serious, this thing is interesting and I need to work with it? Yeah, first of all, to make a long story short, then uh, I've been playing football myself uh, as a youth elite football player, U19, the best league in Denmark. As a kid, I also saw my big cousin Spent and Johnny make good throw-ins, long throw-ins, so I also like like uh, rehearsed that and it became a speciality. But I wasn't good enough to be a football pro player, so I went in the mid-90s to the Danish um, athletics national team. The first year I was training, I was on the national team running 100, 200 and 400 meters. Also the relay, several times Danish champions and, and, and one year. With my club relay team, we also won the European Championship in in uh, four by four hundred meters. But but in 2002, I was still at my top. I just set personal records in one and two hundred meters. But I was moving to the western part of Denmark, where I'm living now, because of my wife. And suddenly, I was training alone instead of a team. And and then I had to find a new sport. It had to be a team sport, but also a sport where I could use my strengths. So. Um, in 2002, I went to the Danish national bobsleigh team and I was driving there in this bobsleigh team, traveling all around the world. Uh, and our goal was to come to the Olympics in Turin in 2006. And it was in the middle of that bobsleigh period in, in 2004, I thought, hey, if I can make a good throw in myself, can't I teach other players to do it? So I went down to my local library and hoped to find that book about throw-ins, but there was no books at all. And <clears throat> of course there yeah. wasn't, yeah. Of course yeah, there no wasn't. And, and nothing serious on the internet. So I used approximately six months to make a throw-in course. At first it was only the long throw-ins. Um, yeah, and then after six months I had to have a club and could be a youth club or amateur club, but I had the courage to contact a local Superliga team from Denmark called Vibor, and they said yes. and. They scored a lot of goals after uh, the long throw in, so that that was a success. Yeah. So, so since 2004, been been coaching, been coaching a lot of professional teams, and like the first the fir first couple of years, it was only like the long throw ins I was coaching. But then suddenly a day, I think it was in like 2008, I saw that hey, my team here, uh, they are losing the ball all the time when they have a normal throw in the middle of the pitch in their own half. So. So I developed this theory called the long, fast and clever throw in. And, but my challenge was that the clubs I was coaching, they only only wanted uh, to have my knowledge about the long throw in. Yes. It was only until uh, Jürgen Klopp called me in in, um, in in the start of July 2018 that, that I've been able yeah, to... Yeah, in the summer of 2018, yeah. Yeah, so, that, so I'm just really happy. It's like an adventure for me. You've had the Guinness World Record for long throw ins and yeah, that was back in the day when you were visiting and uh, attending uh, football camps. I saw some videos on your YouTube channel. You were uh, you had some tips and some uh, you know advice for players. Uh, yeah. This was this this period between bobsleigh and uh, football, or you have already turned into football. 
And no, at, at that time, oh. in, at that time, I was already a throwing coach because I've been you coaching were since, coach. yeah, yeah, since 2004. But but in um, in two in 2008, I thought, hey, if I'm if I'm a good throwing coach, it could also be good to have the longest throwing in the world. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so so I I decided to to try to beat the world record and. Um, yeah, first of all, it was with a flip throw in when you are yeah, yeah, sorry. Make a run in, make a flip. And I'm not a gymnast. I'm a non-gymnast, so I had to learn from the start. And then first I had a record attempt in 2008 in the match between Denmark and Spain in, in the national stadium. And in 2009, I had a I had a, a attempt in, in a match between Hertha Berlin and Wolfsburg on the Olympic Stadium in, in Berlin with, with 40,000 spectators. But then I beat it in 2010. And yes, it was like on a girls' football camp, but that was just a coincidence. It was just <laughs> June 2010. So everyone so, needs to know it. Yeah. So, and to know the technique. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's yeah. So so in 2010 I beat the world record with 51.33 meters. So um, maybe yeah. that's why all the teams wanted from you to learn uh, to learn to them uh, the long throwing, and didn't even think about um, producing tactics for keeping the ball and preserving the, the position. That those tactics came later, and I need to ask that um, in Denmark. Uh, you started from local teams, yeah, you said it, and you worked with Horsens and uh, the Champions Midland. Uh, you brought in some tactics uh, like those, preserving the ball possession or uh, scoring some goals with movements, or it was just the long throw instead? No, I had the knowledge about the thing. I can explain it later about the long, fast and clever throwing, but I had the knowledge of the throwings all over the pitch. But all my teams until... Uh, Liverpool FC only Liverpool. wanted my knowledge about the long throw-in. And it, for example, in FC Midland, it was a big success. In four seasons, we scored 35 goals on long throw-ins. In one season in Horsens, we scored 10 goals after long throw-ins. So, yes, you can have <laughs> successful success with long throw-ins, but you also have to have a physical team. And I was really frustrated because I knew that all the other throw-ins all around the pitch were, were even more important. And especially for teams who are not like totally big guys and so so um but i tried everything i could with all the other teams before liverpool just to say hey i have some knowledge we can do this and we can do this and do this and we're losing the ball all the time and i know that they just wanted to so i think it was a bit it was something about the football culture i think many many places the football culture has been conservative so but when Jurgen Klopp like like called me he said that yeah we uh we had a fantastic season in in the 2017-18 season. With yeah, it was a team that just uh, had, had very recently reached the Champions League final, so it was a, a big success for that team. Yeah, it was a big success in 17-18 season. But Jurgen Klopp said we were really bad at the throw-ins. We lost the ball almost all the time, and 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 later, uh, some some analysis people have seen that in Liverpool. In 17-18 season, Liverpool were only number 18 out of uh, 20 in the Premier League with a possession on 45.4%. So that was before I came. So Jürgen Klopp called me and said, uh, yeah, I tried to do something, but it didn't work. So he invited me <laughs> to Millwood. And, um, so he yeah. had some ideas previously, some yeah, ideas of, some, of his own. Yeah, he had some ideas like any other managers and coaches. Yeah, but like it's... Like most other managers and coaches, it doesn't work because they they lack the knowledge. So, uh, but but Jürgen was so open-minded that it, that he said, "Okay, I, I invite you to a meeting. Let me hear what you have to say." And it was not like Jürgen had to say, "I did this, I did this, I did this." See me? No, it's more like I know you know a lot. Tell me everything. And already after Jürgen have, have said himself that 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 before the meeting he was really positive but after the meeting he was 100 percent sure he wanted to employ me so yeah. um and it also worked like like in my first season with liverpool we we 
we, we improved from 45.4% possession with throw-ins under pressure where everybody is marked before I came to 68.4%. Uh, and we went from uh, number 18 in the Premier League to number one. And it's it's pretty simple. We, If you have to throw, uh, keep the possession, then you have control because if you lose the ball, you're often caught out of balance. And if you keep possession, you can also create chances and score goals. And, and for example, in this season uh, in Liverpool, we scored 13 goals after throw-in situations. It's not the long throw-ins towards the opponent's goal. No, it's more like situations all over the pitch. And of course, there are some like obvious ones. We, we saw the winner against Tottenham. We saw the winner against Wolves. That was both. But we, we've done like 11 more that not so many see because they don't know we're doing something special we 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 rehearsed in training so so throw-ins are very important there are normally between 40 and 60 throw-ins in a match so it's not it's not a marginal gain it's it's a thing that that happens a lot it's in. 40 or 60 passes you know and yeah. someone could say that you learned you taught uh, liverpool players how to pass the ball in yeah. another way yeah at least with the hands but but it's also important for me to say i'm not only coaching the fullbacks and the throwing I'm coaching the whole team, so I'm coaching how they should create space, when they should throw fast, when they should wait. So it's like four or five people. Like sometimes it's all the players in Liverpool I coach in, in training. It could be like two teams of nine, but, but it could also be like 11 versus 11, full pitch, full intensity. Yeah. Then we have throw-in situations. And I'm also doing like video analysis for the team, also doing talks. So both the players and, and, and Jurgen Klopp and, and the other coaches can see what should we do. And then then I'm I'm at Liverpool like six, seven weeks per season and and every the weeks I'm not there, I'm doing video analysis. And th then I'm also sending the 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 throw in analysis to, to Jurgen and the other coaches. So, so Yeah, that's what I'm go I was going to ask uh, that uh, you didn't move to Liverpool to live there. You just visited the, the city and uh, the training ground for some weeks in the season and yeah. send the analysis, right? Okay. Um, yeah. I read somewhere in one of your previous uh, interviews that uh, this was meant to be kept as a secret. Yeah. People hiring you. But uh, you know how people is. Uh, they get ecstatic about those things. It spread quite, uh, quite quickly. Yeah. And I remember myself uh, writing the, the news at Dugan Club hired you. And, and I was discussing it with my colleagues and I was saying, well, that man, Jürgen, uh, he counts every detail. I, I was thinking about Jürgen and after one year, after one season, after seeing the results, I think that the most appropriate thing to say is that man, Thomas, uh, he knows well about football. He knows much about football. And that's the most, uh, I think, uh, most serious thing that you have achieved uh, in your career. And your career doesn't stop here, but continues further, I guess. Uh, you said that you are very willing to work in German clubs. Is that right? Yeah, I'll say, first of all, I'm a freelance coach. Uh, of course, yeah, I've been working two, two seasons with Liverpool now. And yeah, of course, like winning Champions League, the, the World Championship club teams, hope we get the, the Premier League this year. Let's see. Um, but I'm also freelance. For example, this season I'm also coaching like Ajax from Holland, Ken from Belgium, Atlanta United from from uh, the States, FC Midland and Denmark. So the only thing I have is like I try not to coach like like two rival teams from the same league. I will never like coach. Mm -hmm. I'll never like coach Liverpool and Tottenham in the same season. I will never. Let's say that I'm, for example, would would uh, coach a, a team in the bottom of the league. I'll never like 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 coach uh, one of the competitors because that's that's really hard to do in the same season. There'll be problems with fans and everything. Of course, I hope to, I don't know what, what will happen next season. Of course, I hope to continue with Liverpool, but let's see. Uh, we haven't really made a contract yet. So, so but yes, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a freelance throwing coach and and that's the reason why I'm living in Denmark because I'm traveling so much. I'm traveling like, like I don't know, 30, 30 weeks or, or 35 weeks per, per year. So uh, just just want to keep my family here. So uh, yeah. Um, did you feel like 
you played a, a big, big role to the Liverpool team winning the Champions League or making a good run in the Premier League last year and an even better run this year. So do you feel like, uh, yes, I was a, re a real part of this? And do yeah, you feel this? Is that a great feel? Yes, yeah, I feel I'm a, I'm a big part of that because, again, as I said before, there are 40 to 60 throw-ins in a match. Most teams have possession in under 50% of uh, of the throw-ins under pressure where everybody is smart. We had like games, the first game against Tottenham this season in Premier League. We had nine out of nine throw-ins under pressure. That's 100% possession. Tottenham had four out of 16. That's 25%. In, in the first Champions League game against uh, Bayern Munich last year, we had a, about 70% possession. And Bayern Munich had 28 because every time Bayern Munich couldn't throw it fast, it just threw it down the line and that's the worst thing you can do. So uh, in, in, in all games, we're like beating the opponents with 20, 30, 40% possession. And even extreme cases like, for example, Tottenham, we had 75% more possession. So it's important. And it's also important to say it's not only the throw-in, because when I get when I get throw-ins from, from Liverpool, I'm getting the attacking, defending throw-ins. It's just before the throw-in and then the following situation. And um, each of these videos are normally between seven and a half and 10 minutes. So normally, the throw-in and the, uh, the related situation afterwards is it's taking like 15 to 20 minutes of a match. So first, it's it's a big, big part of what happens and how you can succeed. So, of course, it's hard to say if I have been like uh, been improving together with the team, if I, we've been improving the, the, the team's results with 5% or it's 20%, it's hard to measure. But I can just say it has a big influence on... On, on, on Liverpool's performance, so so I'm happy. But again, it's <clears throat> it's important for me to say that even though I'm coming with the knowledge, it's like a teamwork. If the players aren't buying in, if the the coaches, young club isn't supportive, if the, if the physical team, if I'm not talking with them, if I'm not working with the analysis analysis people, then it's not so good. So um, yeah, I think I think I've I've had a big importance for for Liverpool's wrestles. But again. It, it's it's a uh, it's a teamwork. So, uh, but again, I'm really proud of uh, what has happened. And and again, for me, it's like an adventure. I'm often like pinching my arm to see if it's if it's real. If it's true, yeah. Yeah, it, it's totally true. And yeah, so I, I'm just happy. Let let's see what the future brings. Okay, uh, you said something before that uh, there are the minutes that affect the whole throwing situation are really important and and are a great number. I mean, uh, maybe 10% of uh, the whole 90-minute uh, football match. And there is a great conversation that says that uh, in a football match of 90 minutes, uh, only the 60 minutes are being played. Uh, and they blame the, the throw-ins or the goal kicks and, uh, you know, the corner kicks. But you say, let's say the opposite, that uh, the minutes before and after the throw-in and the minutes while you are executing the throw-in are really important, like you are already playing in the field. They are not non-playing time. They are playing time in their own way, right? Yeah. That's that's a, a very new idea. Yeah. In the world of football. And I'll also say that I'll also say that some people have said, "Oh, we shouldn't have throw-ins." But first of all, there are <clears throat> excuse me. There are some people who have looked at what happens when we have a kick in. For example, there's a, there's a video on, on TIFO, uh, TIFO football, it's called on YouTube, where they have been like looking at what will happen if we have kick-ins. First of all, it's mo it will be much worse. If we have kick-ins, you'll see it will be much more boring. You'll have people making a lot of long kicks suddenly, especially like the destructive teams, like really physical teams. And then I'll also say that if you are like working with the throw-ins, with the knowledge I have with the long, fast and clever throw-ins, with creating space, everything, I have three zones, 50 different, uh, 50 different throw-in tools and so on, then it's much more entertaining. And But of course, right now, I can only learn, the, the, learn it to the clubs I'm coaching. But in the future, I'm already now I'm writing on a book. I don't know if I'll publish in one year or three years or five years, but when people see this book, I will also be able to learn it to youth coaches, amateur coaches, and so. And then the the level of the throw-ins would really raise. It's a little bit like 
if you're seeing the the build up in basketball too, you know there's a lot of uh, really interesting things they're doing with 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 movements and everything. And and in basketball, it's really entertaining what they're doing. In football, at the moment, it's only like for most clubs, it's only like okay, yeah, let's just see if we can keep it. Just let's just throw it down the line. And it's it's not good for the clubs, but it's also uh, really boring for the audience to see yeah. through it like this. So when I've been releasing my my book in the future and and and, uh, and my online course, then then you'll see that the the level of the throw-ins are really improving. And then it's instead of a boring thing, it will be a little bit like like Liverpool that it's exciting to see what they're doing now to create space and to keep the ball and to create chances and and score goals with throw-ins. So. Um, yeah, I just look forward to, to, to that. Many managers, many managers say that we're going to lose it, so let's lose it far away from our goal. Yeah. <clears throat> that's the least we can do. And that's, um, you say, and your, uh, your your story so far seems to yeah. to say that this is uh, all wrong uh, from the start of the beginning. It is, it is wrong. Um, and I've heard uh, from you before in uh, other interviews that the managers know that we can make 40 to 60 passes out of throw-ins. And though they are working on uh, corner kicks and combinations, uh, let's uh, raise one hand and you go first post, you go second post, you you mark them, you mark him, uh, you mark the big six, the big defender. Uh, and we close our eyes to the 40 to 60 passes that we can produce from throw-ins. That's really bad. I mean... Uh, you see how Liverpool have improved in one year, and you wonder, is Thomas so great without undermining their job, of course, but or are the other teams so awful in taking uh, thrones in our football days? Yeah, it's only about, for me, it's just a lack of knowledge. No one has really like like looked at throw-ins because a lot of people are like laughing throw-ins and, and a lot of people have said to me that's crazy or they laugh at, 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 at you being a throw-in coach. But that's always the way when you're the first, when you're like the like like the first to take steps somewhere, people would, a lot of, not all, but a lot of people look at you like you are totally weird. Of course, I have a lot of support from all around the world, from analysis people, from coaches, managers. People write me every day, so there's a lot of support, but also also a lot of uh, people who think I'm crazy or it's it's totally weird. Or so, so for me, it's 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 not because they're not good coaches or managers. If they haven't really thought about throwing, they've just been lacking knowledge. So there's, I know I'm a little bit special, but I, I, since I was a kid, kid I was passionate for throwings. Since 2004, I've been thinking about throw-ins every day, working with it, also dreaming about throw-ins someday. So, so if, if you if you have to bring places somewhere, you have to have one or or or, or some some guys who are really like like pulling pulling the wheel to, and and that's my job at the moment. And um, so, so I think it's just a lack of knowledge. It's just like. As you said before, we just throw it 30 meters down the line and hope we will keep it. If we don't, it's a little bit away from our goal. And But again, it's just the worst thing you can do with it because you often lose the duel. Or if you, and if you win the duel, you'll often like flick it on to the central defense of the opponent. So, But again, I think it's just a lack, lack of knowledge. They don't know what to do because, yeah, of course, they can like like do one or two things. But, you know... Often, if you only have like like one or two things to do when you have a situation, it's like it's easy to read. So uh, it's easy to cover uh, teams who are throwing it down the line. I'm not saying that you can never keep the ball after throw down the line because sometimes you're lucky. Sometimes I also see like 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 some teams are just making a throw in backwards to a free play and then you just shoot it. You just shoot it down the line again, and of course it can work sometimes, but but first of all it's easy to see if they normally do it, and and it's also pretty easy to to cover like all lot of like uh, unreflected long balls. So so I think it, it's it's just a matter of uh, of knowledge and accessible knowledge because the clubs who are hiring me they have my knowledge and even you know with live training and, and analysis. But 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 even though the managers from the competing clubs are reading articles about me and so, 
then the they don't know really how do they do it, how do they do it on the pitch. So, so they have like perhaps they can perhaps see like 15, 20 percent of what Liverpool is, is doing on, on social media because someone is oh they did this and did this, but they haven't got the full picture and they don't know how to train it to the players. So so I think it's a lack of knowledge. But uh, yeah, as you said before, Jurgen himself had an idea and what should be appropriate, but it wouldn't work. So he needed you and to hire you and your knowledge. So uh, last question, uh, in the end of the day, would you like to be remembered as Thomas, the guy who came up with uh, this bright and idea and he was the only one working on it or as the Thomas, as Thomas Gronemark, uh, the master that uh, showed the world the new, the new path and made a whole new school of uh, football taxi, tactics and philosophy. I'll, I'll rather be be the guy who learns the world something new and teach teams uh, and 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 coaches new things about throwings because I've always said like if I'm talking with people that it's like a dream for me to coach clubs like Liverpool FC and Ajax, RB Leipzig been coaching them too and yeah and if, and they'll of course also be big teams in the future too but my biggest dream is to change the football world so because um, I've been playing a lot of football myself I do it sometimes myself still just for fun but but my biggest dream would be to change the football world and I can kun I can only change the football world if I am helping coaches and football people all over the world because if it's only like about me how what do I perform? How? What big clubs do I coach? Of course, it's great, but it's not the biggest thing. So, so I hope that people will remember remember me as as the guy who uh, who changed throw-ins and and helped football to be a even more entertaining game than than it is right now. I mean, uh, will you be proud if uh, someone else came up and said, "Okay, I mean, I I read your book. Let's say in one or two years from now." Uh, and I know how to teach, and no, uh, there would be two Thomas Gronemarks or three Thomas Gronemarks uh, in some years from now, and a whole new school of new coaches in throwings, like we have goalkeeping coaches, like we have uh, physical condition coaches. Yeah. Each team will have its uh, uh, throwing coach or master, let's say. Yeah. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't it make you proud yeah, to think that be- I started all this? Yeah, I'd be very proud. I'd be really, really proud because, first of all, I can't teach all clubs in the world with live coaching. So yeah, I'd be obviously. proud. Like, even, even I, I have six professional teams this, or sorry, eight professional teams this season, and I'm really busy. So, and there are like I don't know how many professional teams in the world. And for me, it's all also like teaching youth clubs and amateur clubs. I, I, I wrote with a Australian guy. Uh, yeah, a couple of days ago, he said only in Australia there, there's more than 10,000 uh, football coaches. And that's what was only in Australia. So I haven't really got the number, but I think there are several of million uh, football coaches all around the world. So so there is plenty of room for other guys who are teaching the, th- the, the, the throw-ins, the long, the fast, the clever throw-in. And, and it could also just be like assistant coaches who are really like, you know, saying like, and education. Perhaps I'll make an education in the future also for them to to be educated as throwing coaches. So, so yeah, they'll just just uh, they'll make me happy. So, but I think the big um, the big the big jump will be like when I'm when I'm uh, like publishing my book uh, and my online courses. And if people like to follow that, I'm. Um, yeah, I'm in the, the next couple of days, I have a new like website, uh, thomasgronemark.com. So people can just like like uh, take a look in there. It, it's like ready, I think tomorrow or Monday. Okay. So, so uh, or just follow me on LinkedIn or or uh, Twitter, Instagram or something like that because I just want to um, inspire so many, not only coaches but also players and analysis people as possible. Also uh, the spectators, the audience too. So uh, yeah. My last comment is that uh, you just opened the door to the uh, football world and we are very willing to to walk on, to walk in and to see 
what's your secrets and what's your ideas and your philosophy on football. So, uh, once again, thank you very much for being uh, with us and with the Greek audience. I really appreciate it. And what I could wish is to see you live <laughs> in some of your uh, courses yeah. or uh, in stadiums and discuss yeah. football uh, next to you. Yeah, and I'll just say, just to make my end common, I love to visit Greece. It could be like for a club, it could be like for a, a course in the future or like a talk. I've been to Greece twice. I've been to Rhodes, but also been to uh, Athens also. So, And especially Athens, I really fell in love with that. So I have to return to Athens again. I love the Greek uh, culture, the history, the sculptures, the yeah, everything. So, uh, so yeah. Hope there are all over Greece, not only in Athens, only yeah, in Rhodes. I know that. You know, I know that. I know you that. Should, uh, turn around all Greece to to find the, everything you need to see, to see and uh, and take in your mind. So uh, I'm calling you from Thessaloniki, uh, northern Greece, yep. uh, which is a very extraordinary city in my eyes. So you're very welcome to to come here and have a great time whenever you want. Thank you again for this interview.